Hello everyone, my name is Tank 100 and welcome to the Comic Squadron channel. Today we're going to be talking more about command panels and how you can create yourself a server selector. By the end of this video, you will be able to have a server selector that spawns in the player's inventory in the lobby. When they right click it, it'll show which lobbies you can join. If they're online, how many players they're in and when you click on it, it'll bring you to the selected server. Hope this video helps you create your own server selector and let's get on into it. So first things first, you're going to want to get a feel for how you want your server selector to look. You can either use a single chest or a double chest depending on how big you want the panel to be. I usually use a single chest for my server selectors because I don't usually have that many servers. But all you're going to do is grab yourself some items that represent your servers. I'm using a bed, sword, and grass for each server and then some decorative blocks just to make the server selector feel a little more lively. So I just chose some of the glass panes because they're nice and flat whenever you place them. One recommendation for decorative items is if you don't want them to have a name, you're going to want to rename them. If you're using essentials or something, you can do like slash item name where you have it in your hand, but I don't have that installed on this server. So all I'm going to do is rename it in an anvil. I'll get right back when I'm done with it. Easiest trick is to name them a color code. I usually just use and F, which is white. After that, you're going to open the chest and place your items how you want. So my kit PVP is going to be on the right. Lobby is in the center and survival on the left. Once you have that, grab your decorative items and just start decorating it. And now that you have that, you have your server selector. If you like how it looks, then we can move on to the next step, which is actually generating the panel. All you're going to do is go out of the chest, do slash CPG. This will turn on generation mode. All you have to do is open the chest and it'll make a panel for you. Now we're going to actually go into the YML to make sure we have everything configured right. So I'll see you guys in a second. Now that we're here, you'll see this panel two was generated. We can rename it to server selector to make sure we know what it is. All you have to do is right click edit in any program. I use notepad plus plus. Once you're in here, you can rename the panel to something like server selector. There we go. And then change the title. There we go, server selector. And right here is row three. This can be changed depending on what chest you did. If you did a double chest, it'll be six. If you did just a single chest, it'll be three. If you'd like to add any more lines, you can do anywhere between one and six lines and it'll change depending on what you put. So now, as you can see, all of the items were automatically filled in. All of these stained glass panes are the decorative items and they're named and F so that when we open the panel, we don't see the names of them. They just kind of sit there. But if we scroll, you'll see grass block right here, white bed, and iron sword. These are our server blocks. So what we're going to want to do is name them. I'm going to name this one survival. There we go. The white bed lobby. And the iron sword kit PvP. So now that we have the names down, we're going to want to work on the lore. The lore is useful for when you want to show like what the server's for, how many people are online, if the server's even online, and instructions if they don't know how to click an item or something like that. Or maybe you made it so right click comes up with more information. So first line I like to do is a description. There you go. Then the next line, for now, I'm just going to say click me. Or click to join. Now that we have that, you can just copy and paste it over to the other items. So the lobby and kit BVP. And then just change the description to whatever you want. There we go. Descriptions are now done. And now we're going to want to set up the commands. If you're using Bungie Cord, you're going to need to make sure that you have your servers set up. So whenever you type slash server in game, you'll see it comes up with the list of which server you have. These names are the ones you're going to need to use for the actual command that I will show you in a second. So make sure you have them memorized or just make sure you have them somewhere you can look at really quickly. So. All you're going to do is add commands and then we're going to do server equals 
and then that server name. So for survival, mine's just named survival. Next is lobby. So we'll do commands dash server equals lobby. And then kit PVP is just named kit PVP. Make sure that there is no space between the equals and server. If there is, it'll just say unknown command when you click it. And make sure that this name is exactly what you have set in the bungee cord config. Now that we have that, it is a technically a functional server selector. But before we can do anything, we want to make sure that they have it in game when they join the server. To do this, make sure you have the permission set to default or a permission that they have. If you change this to anything else like selector or something like that, make sure you give them the permission node command panel dot panel dot whatever it is. So if you change it to admin, it'd be admin. And then this would just be admin. And as long as they have this, they will spawn in with that selector. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it default. And right now we're going to need an add open with item. Add the open with item space in with two spaces. Do not use tabs at all. If you use tabs, it'll mess up the YML and it just won't open. Next, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a material, which is the item they're going to spawn with. So we're going to do a compass. Then you're going to need a name. I always put it in the quotes just to make sure it doesn't break anything. If you put special characters, if you use a special character, like you say a name and then you do the apostrophe S, you're going to want to make sure that instead of using the apostrophe for the quotes, you're going to use actual quotes just like that. So all I'm going to do is just like that. Now that you have that, you can add a lore. I'm just going to do click me to open and then stationary stationary is going to be what slot the item spawns in. This is zero to eight. So uh, normal item inventory has nine slots, one through nine, but with this, it is zero to eight. So all you have to do is take whatever slot you want, subtract one, and that's the number you have to put here. So to put it in the middle slot, which is slot five, I'm going to do stationary four. So that'll put it in the middle. And then we're going to add the command, the so commands, open equals, which is how you open a panel. And we're going to put the panel name. So this panel name right here, not the file name, but the actual panel name, we're going to paste it right there. So when they right click the compass that they're going to have in their inventory, it'll run this command and open up the panel. So once you have that done, make sure you save, go back into game. Once you're in your game, do slash CPR, make sure that it's reloaded properly. And you'll see that we don't have the item in inventory yet. The reason for this is because you have to relock. So all we're going to do is disconnect, reconnect real quick. And as you can see, we now have the selector. If we right click the selector, it'll open up our menu. And you can see it says survival, lobby, and KPP, server selector. All these don't have a name. They'll still show up with the box. That's just a Minecraft limitation. But now you can click on, let's say, KPP, and it'll send you to the desired server. But we still need to show if the server's online, how many players are online and that kind of thing. So if we go back to the lobby, now that we're here, what we're going to want to do is make sure we have placeholder API installed. I have that installed as one of the plugins. As you can see, I already have it, but I'll leave the download link in the description so you guys can go download it. After that, we're going to need to install an extension called Pinger. So this is a list of all extensions that uh, placeholder API offers and what plugins use it. So if we scroll down to the P section, you'll see it says pinger. If we click on that. It brings up all the placeholders and the command to install it. I will leave a link in the description to this so you guys can look at it. All you're going to do is copy this command and type it into chat. I already had it installed, but if you didn't, it'll say success. And then all you have to do is do poppy reload. And now it'll register all of those different placeholders. So if we go back to the list, the placeholders we're going to be using is online. Both of these do the exact same thing, but I'm just going to use the online one because it's a little bit shorter and players. So this is going to ping how many players is on the server and if the server is online. So once it's installed, go to your YML 
And all we're going to do is go down to your selectors and we're going to add to the lower. Once you have a new line, go back over to the website and we're going to copy this placeholder, the pinger online, and then the server IP. We're going to paste it in. And once you have that, make sure you have your two percentage symbols. That's how uh, the plugin knows that it's a placeholder. And right here is the server IP and port. So for me, I'm hosting this locally, so I can just do localhost and then the port, which is just 25565, which is the default Minecraft port. Then once you have that, we're going to add another line to show how many players are online. So I'm going to add a little bit more information to this lore. And then we're going to grab the Plinger players test plugin, blah, blah, blah. Go back in, paste it in and change the IP again for me, localhost, just like that. And then I'm going to add out of a hundred. So this is how you can show if there's however many players out of that many max players. Then we're going to copy this over to the other items. So now we're going to move over to lobby. My lobby is actually set to 25565. So I'm just going to change survival to six. And then this one's already correct. So now I'm going to move down to kit PVP and change this to seven. Just like that. Save, go back in game slash CPR just to make sure that it actually reloads. And when you open it, when you hover over it, it'll now show online or offline and how many players. When you first install Pinger and get it set up, it's going to say offline for a little bit. Uh, it'll update in a tiny amount of time. If you have panel refresh on, it'll automatically show up. But if you don't, you can just close and reopen until it eventually shows online. Oh, I'll give it a second. There we go. Now it says online. And if we look at lobby, it says players one out of 100 because I'm currently in the lobby server. Now that you have your selector set up for the hub, maybe you want to make sure that people, if they are in a certain server, can actually get the selector back up without having it in their inventory constantly. So to do this, I'm going to set up a command using slash servers instead of server. And all we have to do is go back to the YML, go to your plugins folder, take the selector YML, and we're going to put it into the other server. So for me, that's kit PVP, command panels, plugins, and we're just going to paste it in. We're going to edit it and we're going to get rid of this open with item. You either can get rid of it or if you just delete commands and stationary, it will not show up in your inventory. But below either title or empty, anywhere above item, we are going to add commands. So I'm going to do it below title. Commands. And then we're going to add the command we want. This can be anything you want. So I'm going to do servers just like that. And now if we go back in game while you're in the kit PVP server, just do CPR. You have to make sure you have command panels installed in all of the servers. And we're going to do slash servers. It'll come up with a selector. Since we don't have pinger installed on the placeholder API on this server, it's going to show the placeholder rather than actually showing the value. That can be easily fixed if you just do the poppy install sort of thing. But that works. Another thing is if you can see right here, it says unknown command. You can't like press tab to get it to come up. If you go into your command panels config right here, edit and find the line that says auto register commands. If you set this to true, anytime you add a command to a panel, just like the servers one I created, It'll automatically register the command to your commands.yml so that when you do type in slash servers, it'll autofill and you can see it as a command. This can break depending on what command you're using. So if you do a command like kit and it's used for slash kit, whatever kit with essentials, sometimes it'll break it. You can also toggle this based on panel using the panel type. I'm not going to show you how to do that today. It's on the wiki. I will leave a link to the wiki in the description if you would like to check that out. But since this is not a command that's actually on the server, nothing will break. So I'm just going to use this for this example. Once that's set to true and you reload your server, the slash servers will actually come up in the yellow like that. 
but this works if we click it'll bring us to the lobby and then we still have the selector so every time you leave and rejoin you will always have the selector so hopefully this video helped you guys out and hopefully you were able to create your own server selector for your server if you guys found this video helpful please leave a like and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more please subscribe i have many other videos on tutorials for command panels and many more to come so hopefully you guys have a good day and i'll see you next time